Cupar was incorporated as a village in 1905. Since its inception, the town has had its share of both fire and natural disaster. As a result, the face of Cupar has altered drastically. Yet it will take more than fire to destroy the spirit of the pioneer and a firm belief in a better future. Many years ago, the residents of Cupar began the first steps that now provide our town with an unsurpassed beauty, an island of lush greenery surrounded by a patchwork quilt of rich and productive farmland. Well, the town was formed mostly by, I would say, English, Irish, and Scotch descent, because north of town being hilly and stony, it wasn't settled until after the town came into being. There used to be at one time what they called the German settlement, and there was a Jewish settlement. There was a Hungarian settlement, a Romanian settlement. The land north of here was all homesteaded family on every half section of land. Having a valley to the south of us, a creek to the west of us, and a creek to the east of us, and two reserves, both north and south, has made this more of a center. Personally knew the man that owned the quarter section that the town was living on. But he said he was plowing this you know, on this quarter of land when a man from the CPR walked out to him and uh, offered him to buy this quarter section to put the town on. I also understand it was a con one of the railroad men that uh, named the town, town. You'll find the town of Cupar Desert and Mark Inch in Scotland. And he was a Scotchman, and they said that it was him that named the town. The first train came through in 1906. Bed and the tracks were all laid, but the bridge work at Mark Inch Creek and Lipton was not complete until the 1906. The station later burnt down and uh, was rebuilt about 1940. Quite a big store down where the apartment block is there, just south of the post office, Peckett store. Real modern, when you went in and bought something, gave the clerk your money and She'd put it in a little cart, take it, roll it over to the cashier. And <laughs> it was quite a, well, when you were young, that looked like a real city store. <laughs> this brick garage burnt down. It burnt down about 35, 36. But it was built about, I think, 1917. And I remember the night that that fire happened. I happened to be coming to town with the team. It was in the winter time. I put them in the barn and I helped pull the fire engine down to the fire. Well, I would say the Reunion Bank building was built in six or around that. And they stayed until the Royal bought them out. And Heskus himself bought what was Melder, Melder, Mellis, and, and Shepherd out in 1912. Called it the Heskus or the Munn building where the bakery was in. It burned down. It was quite a loss to the town. That was built in 1930, and then the south part was built on. Used to be Chinese laundry right on that corner. Bet you there's no pictures of that. <laughs> no. What is now the Anglican Church? 
and what is now the United Church were both built, I understand, in 1906. It uh, wasn't called United then, it was a Methodist Church. It was the United until 1925 when they joined the Union and the Presbyterian Church. In 1948, the United Church remodeled the church, mo moved it, just really turned it north and south instead of east and west and added what is the choir loft and the entrance. A uh, Lutheran church, quite a little history about it, did start here in Cupar for a few years in the 20s and really is connected with North Cupar because they built a church up north about eight miles out till they moved it into town here. The Anglicans has remained the same. As a kid, I can remember going to school and the Catholic Church was there, but it was remodeled in, I think, in the 50s. And the old building is now standing on the, beside the Legion Hall. During the war years, even the Second World War, the population was less than 300. I think pretty near a third of the town was in the forces. I think it was 73 or 75 from Cuba. I can't tell you off, offhand how many boys lost their lives in the war, most of them overseas, all right. The original school area was called Harrington School District, and they changed it in 1907 to Cupar School District, and had this half of school built, later completed to a four-room school. The office for the unit or the school district was completed in 1920. We were using the Methodist Church for the primary school and the original schoolhouse, which sits on Main Street. They used it as a school that was known as the Shamrock Hall. That was the first plane that landed here at Cupar, just about where the clinic is now. That was Gene Hesketh that's sitting on the wing. We got a half holiday at school because it came in just noon hour. And a fellow named Ike Bricker that used to be here, the first man that ever drove to Regina in a car and was the first man that ever flew to Regina. He went back with them. Drugstore was there from well, before 1910. Ellen Stewart, Max Stewart, his dad built it, the doctor. And a man made it, name of Madden ran up till Max bought it out in the 30s. Nurse Scott came and used to go from home to home, uh, really. Uh, if your mother was sick, she'd come and stay maybe a week or two weeks. Or if you're, somebody's having a baby, she'd go and look after the mother. It was built about 1918 or 19, and she ran it as a private hospital until she retired. When she died, she had an in, in her will that the hospital board could buy it back and we did and used it as a hospital prior to 59 when the present clinic was built. Today it's a little different since the tractors come in, especially south of the town where uh, men lived on the farm for the winter because they had to look after stock, had to have horses, usually had a cow or two. But uh, when the tractor came in, it freed them up for the winter, and that's when a lot of farmers moved into town and started to get bigger. 